Hey, it's Chris, and welcome back to something else, possibly Amiga-ish. A while back, I did a video on Morph OS 3.18 or 3.18 on a Power Mac G5, and our resident Morph OS fan, Mr. Matt 3K, reached out to a brother way back at the World of Commodore show. We were talking about this, and he said, if I ever find a PCIe model, I should jump on it. And if he ever found one super cheap, he would buy it for me and give it to me, which is exactly what he did. A box showed up today in a big, in a big Dell box. And inside is a big computer. I'm going to put this back down on the floor. And it came with some other items for the Mac side. A box copy of Panther, a copy of Leopard, a Mac Attic CD, a shooter pack with Sin, Hexen 2, Heretic 2, and the original Mac OS X box. I like the box software. I'm a huge Mac fan, as you know, but Macs from the past. Let me get this box out. First time I am seeing this unit, I guess I should have put this down first. You dumbass. So, Mr. Matt, thank you so much. I offered to reimburse you and or shipping or anything and you said no and you know I have a hard time being humble but I greatly appreciate this this which looks just like my other one a couple little whiskey scratches they buff out on the back of this power mac firewire 400 800 two gigabit ethernets optical in optical out headphone speaker three USBs, massive power chunky cable. That's why I needed this special. It looks like a 20 amper, but it's not because it's standard US plug, but special cable that is different than my regular whatever that this one won't work in it because, you know, you need this one. I guess it's thicker for more ah. unknown graphics card. I don't know what this slot is. That's new to me on this model. Now my Power Mac G5s are a 1.8 gigahertz. I thought it was a 2. They're 1.8s. I had a, a root canal today. Yay! <laughs> All right, we're gonna remove this and look at this processor module. G5 single processor. This is one processor, and it is a monster truck. We'll take a look at it in a second. Same plastic montage here. The Super Drive has been smashed out it doesn't even look like it's connected actually um, it has a hard drive in it pny of unknown and it has a graphics card of unknown and a big heat sink up here but she is pci express mine was pci extended on my mac i have two fans in the back two triple blades in the front which this one also has they are very similar in how they come out and a massive heat sink with some big Super duper vent sucks. Eight sticks of RAM of unknown unknown. She's a little dusty. All right, cables back in. Let me see if I can put this shielding around here. Oh, the drive took a hit. The drive took a smash. Yeah, and broke the thing. Well, we'll just ignore that and put this around it, and that'll hold it in place. Like that so I don't know how that came undone in the shipping or if this drive even works or if this computer even works this is a uh, power mac g5 2 gigahertz dual core 512 160 16 dual layer super drive 2005 power mac g5 I'll clean all this up later we're just going to go for an initial fire up to see what it is and I'm just going to leave the case as is you ready please don't blow up Boy, that's quiet. <laughs> Mine are like, woo. Fans are spinning. It's a brand new, so the fresh install on it for the sale, which is fine by me. I'll have to do the setup. Back and we'll get some system profiler specifics. Power Mac G5, Power Mac 11.2, Power PC G5 1.1, 2 gigahertz, 2 CPUs. It's actually 1 CPU, 2 core, 5 gigs of RAM, which is 
weird because there's eight sticks. They must be mis mismatched. Let's take a peek. Oh yeah, 256, 256, 256, 256. Empty, empty, so two aren't even registering. They probably popped out. ECI Gig E for and a GeForce 6600 with 128 megs of RAM. NVIDIA chipset. That is not compatible for Morph OS. The base graphics card is, but I have a graphics card on order and it still has not shown up yet. PNY 480 gig, which is nice because I only had 120s. In the lower slot, PRAM battery is a 2032 below the RAM right down here. You can barely see it. The old PRAM was right here on this big heat sinky thing of... The idea with this is to find a 2.5, 2.7 would be awesome, but a 2.5, the liquid cooled booger. Take the whole liquid cooled radiator apart. When I find one, I'm going to do that. Pull the actual processor module out, use this heat sink, and swap it into something epic. I got her up to 6 gig. I gotta order more RAM. Okay, cover's back on, safety pin is back in. Thank Mr. Matt one more time on the old Discord. Very, very gracious, very humbling. As all my donations are, I greatly appreciate it from everybody. Does the CD work? It's custom around here to get the Slayer Christmas album, Seasons of the Abyss. F12 is your insert here. Whoops, F12 hold. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the Slayer Christmas album is successful. Volume was down. This speaker actually pumps it out. It's been about a week, and I haven't touched a thing. It's been sitting here. RAM is still in the place. I did do some Windex work and some 000 steel wool on the aluminum. Got her all nice and pretty. She does have some battle scars. Looks like something with screws was tossed on top. I, under the guidance of our new Jedi Master of Morph, Mr. Matt 3K, purchased a video card for this system. I don't know what it is. I just bought it. It's brand new. It's this. It's heavy as hell. It's got two DVI and an S video port. Let me pull up my eBay thing. A Mac Edition PCI Express Radeon X1900 GT 256 meg DVI 129 I paid for it. NOS, brand new, and when I mean brand new, she is brand new. Still smells like bad electronics. I cleaned all the dust and crap out of here. Hey, unplug the monitor, might help. This is the card that was in it. Okay, so this card's gonna get mothballed. The capacitors on this motherboard look great. Apple uses, for its surface mounts, organic polymers, which are very high quality capacitors. This card in here. And I'm gonna boot this Macintosh style first. This plugs in to the little, it has a little header, little Mac M6 to the six. Pull the front fan out so I can see what the hell I'm doing. The plug for this card is right at the very top of that fan. Right there. Holy Christmas. There's the plug, plugs into there. We're gonna get a sad Mac face. Seven fans in this puppy. For $6.99, I bought a Best Buy Insignia brand, Best Buy Essentials brands, HDMI to DVI-D. Ooh, that fan is cooking on that card. And I feel some major outage from it. Cool. Power Mac. -y. See, I got I got I don't have a hard drive. So, why? What's wrong with this with this drive? So I thought, okay, but port two works fine. ATI X nineteen hundred XT PCI X sixteen two fifty six megs nineteen twenty by twelve hundred sixty hertz can display multiple displays. Great. This day is getting better and better. This is a SATA 2 drive, SATA 3 gigabyte, which is SATA 2. This is a SATA 3, it says SATA 3 6 gig. That is a, it's crucial, so that's a SATA 3 also. No destination, because remember what I told you about Apple engineering, it's like German engineering, it's fine, precise, and everything is artistically made. Well, that makes disassembly. Just about as much fun as putting the intake manifold gasket on a BMW. Okay, that's it. 
Call me a nut farm. Thank God. So, this had a Spy Meek on it. Boot 01314. 150 gig. E race. SATA 3. Works in slot 2. Why, Apple? Why? Well, I know why, because you're Apple. Why would you do that? Oh. <laughs> Bitch, I don't give a f Power Mac G5. In slot B, SATA 3 is supported. In the primary slot, SATA 2. This exact drive would not work. So that's an interesting find if you're a Macintosh nut. If you can confirm that. I got a message on Discord today from Mr. P.O. P.E.O. Who said, Morph OS, uh, my comment's not sticking, but did you know that uh, Chrysalis for 318 was released a week ago? I'm new to Morph OS and got a Mac Mini a couple months back. So no more need to start the house heating G5 when I want it to run for 15 minutes. I don't know anything about Chrysalis or the simple to install application, easy to install, which is from the same developer, but it will seem like more videos from you about this Amiga-like OS. Yes, Chrysalis is an expansion pack for Morph. It gives you a ton of things like EUAE and a bunch of programs pre-installed. Think of it like a kick-butt boing ball pack for the Amiga with tons of utilities and applications included. And it's great. But this easy to install app that I've shown when I was doing the, the 318 video on the original Power Mac G5 Dual 1.8 was, uh, I think, far superior. Yes, Chrysalis is wonderful. It's just been gone forever. Two minutes left. Just got to notice that the Chrysalis pack is now available and it includes the easy to install. When I first bought my Mac Pro, one of my vendors came in and I was messing with them. They didn't understand Macs and I had my finger on the eject button here and I'm like, watch, this is biometrics. This is how cool Macs are. You just swipe down and it opens and then if you swipe up, it sucks it back in. I said, now you try it. And he, he did this, and it didn't do nothing. I'm like, no, it's coded for my DNA. Watch. See? And then he didn't even pay attention over here. So, funny little useless story. <laughs> you ever need something, and you can't find it to save your life? And you go out to the store, and you buy another one, and then you realize that your apple tray with the right little round screws that slides right into this SOB is your Morph OS drive with the tray from your previous Macintosh. Yeah. Since this is a new Mac, I'm gonna have to buy Morph again, which I will. I also have an Apple branded Seagate, Seacrate Barracuda. Hey, Western Digital Blue two terabyte that I found in one of my old NASs. I'm not gonna bore you. I'm gonna put the original Apple cable back we're going to fire up this hard drive, 500 giger rotational. She is a big potato, and it is an Apple drive. I don't know what machine it came out of. Probably one of my Macs. Duh. It's a SATA 2 drive. 500 gig SATA 2. So that's the answer. Last we left off for you was a couple seconds ago. For me, it's been several days. I registered Morph OS, 79 euro dollars. That's about 80 something bucks for me while that's rebooting I do have both monitors hooked up and help a little bit for Mr. Matt on how this works with dual screens I set my Morpho as screensaver for one minute and it does span across the screens this is not like Windows 11 or Windows 10 or Mac with dual screens it's nothing like that it does do dual screen support but ambient desktop is only on the one sorta if I fire up Iris, the email client, it's going to activate that window. And there's email. I didn't set it up yet, but there you go. Now the cool thing is, I can left mouse, I can, you know, go over here, I can move the window around. The monitor's got to warm up a little bit. It's like an RTG screen or an MUI public screen. So, a retargeted screen. Cool thing is, let's say I open a browser up. I don't have a network card in here now, so it's going to air out. In the contextual menu up here, there is a little thing that says jump to screen. Jump to screen. I'll just use the next one. I named it Iris. I'll just say next. Pow! And it sucks it over there. 
Now I have Wayfair and Iris on their own screen. I can, you know, drag them out of the way. Can't drag them back across. They, they get lost. It's not like Windows. It's different. But I can go back here and I can, you know, do something else on a transfer, or fire up Eagle Player, or open Rhino and or Media Player, and watch a movie or SMB mounter and then I can go back over to check in my mail or surf in the web if I want this back I say jump to next and it fires it right over here's the morph screen and then when I'm done I close it it'll quit Wayfair the MUI public screen jump makes a new one for me and I can toggle them and I can go click and it jumps it over here but it's easier to just move your mouse so that's that's how dual screens works. Now let me show you the pseudo weirdness of complexity of setting that up. Uh, so if I go setting ambu ambient MUI at the top there, so you have info screen, windows groups, buttons, text, list, menus, images, help, and keyboard. You want to go to windows here. Nothing here. Now if I turn these on, pop-up button, there's the pop-up button, so I take pop-up button off and I put the jump button. See a little arrow now? That automatically fires this whatever window you have to the other screen. So if you want the pop-up button, you gotta, it's a contextual thing. So I just kinda do uh, the little jump to. And screen. This one right here. And I clicked new. Right? I named mine Iris. So when I click new, a settings that are come up unnamed. I edit this and I choose the video port. Now on M on Morph with a video card that is supported, this is my standard ports. See these dot ones right here? Have a dot one next to them. That's the resolution for that monitor. Okay? So what I do is I give it a name with the screen. I call it mine Iris. I chose 1920, right? By whatever. And hit OK. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to name this. Whoops. Yeah, I'm going to edit this. Name it. Second screen. Say OK. There we go. So I call it second screen. And I say save. Now if I open up Iris, by default, I had it set to every time I open up Iris to open up on that right window. So if I do this, that's Wayfair. That won't work. Oh, that's Iris. Now I can say, jump to the second screen, and it'll kick on, it'll turn the second screen on, and it should jump over there. And there we go. See? Alright, so this is how I force a program to go to the second monitor by default. So, in the contextual menu here in the corner, if you turned it on, I'm going to go to MUI settings for this program. That's this program. And I just say screen this one. I'm going to say second screen it pops over there automatically and then I click save and then quit it. Now every time I open Iris it'll open on that second screen. You the screen's off. I know. Watch. Boom. You can do that for any program you want. Once it's up, it's up. The Morph OS screensaver is going to come on whether there's a program running or not if it's off but the you know it has power the Morph Butterflies, which I chose, will take over both screens. They're the blue butterflies that uh, represent this operating system. And there we go. You can see Morph OS blue butterflies are starting to populate the screen. So that's just one aspect of dual screens on Morph OS with a compatible video card. So I can open Wayfarer here, choose my menu here, MUI settings, screen, Whatever I named my second screen, I can make a bunch of these. How many monitors do you want? Uh, so, second screen, it'll pop over there as soon as I do this. Click, see? And then I would hit save. But I'll say I want it on ambient screen. Now, if you, let's say uh, you didn't have your second monitor turned on, it'll just suck everything back over to here. It does remember its preferences, so I got so much new stuff. We have such sights to show you. If you wanted to make a panel in Morph, that's like the little dock bar thing down here. Uh, what you do is you, you right contextual click at the top and you go to settings. Now there's 
four settings. There's ambient, ambient MUI, system, and MUI. I'm not a moron, you know. Why do you have to be such a wanker? What? Yeah. So just go to the top one, and on the left-hand side, you choose panels. New panel. I can click it right now. There it is, right here. Yep. I want Orga in it. I just drag this to it. There's my panel. I can put it wherever I want. There you go. But I'm going to get rid of this panel. Delete. Okay. And I have my stuff in here. You can change the order, change the size, how it looks globally, force it into a square grid, how fast you want them to be. Very granular. So I'm going to change my blanker. So there's a bunch. I don't think they have the Hellraiser cube. It's called Lament and it's X screensaver, but they have a Matrix one. Oh, the Starfield one looks pretty cool. Let's test it out. Both screens, Starfield? Nope, just one screen. I used to have a screensaver called Starfield on my Amiga. It didn't do the sliding, but it looks pretty cool. Kind of looks like snowflakes looking up. Some of these are pretty intense. There we go. And, yeah. Does it automatically? They're independently running. So it's like two separate copies. You'll notice rotation on this one and not that one yet. That one's running straight. So that's a little bit more modern, right? For Morph. So we're back. It's been about a week. I got one of these. It's a TP-Link PCI-X1 model TG3468. This was seven US dollars on eBooger. A little baby card. He kinda looks like a baby. A mini bracket if you got a tiny one. This card works where this internal ones is still in development for this model G5. The other G5 that I own, the 1.8 and the 2, work fine. Registered to me. I don't know why my bar is stuck up here, but I'll drag it back down there. Let's see if the Ethernet just ma miraculously works. Turn into settings system and we'll go to network. And there it is. Well, honk my horn. I did nothing. Our Realtek 8168 Ethernet 0.device. We are online. And this is a modern HTML5 browser. And you get a Google page just like every other modern web browser in the world. Now we can get our latest updates because I have networking. I'm going to choose this more filer. Install. All right, there's more filer, and we're just going to run it. I've done nothing, and we're just going to say start. Yeah. My screensaver set to one minute, but boom, encore. Great demos. I'm going to quit. I'm going to download something else here. Kinashinashanashash. So many great demos. So there's my second window. I'm going to load Keshnikosh, and we're just going to say start. Brand new, never saw this one before. Keshkosh. Beautiful colors. The way they do it. I don't know if it's OpenGL, but no more planar. And my second window is still running, by the way. I'm going to be working on the mail. I'll watch the demo. Lots of intro stuff. I'll watch it later. More Fever we downloaded before. That's a great one. I'm just grabbing it to grab it. We've seen this one before. Encore demo. Really good one this one is. This was 2023, September 14th, 2023, actually. Start it. It's kind of flickery for me, like stuff's flying by the screen. This little $50 Devoom is doing pretty good. Every Amiga demo does this. 
Every single one of them. Flying through a tunnel. Start. Oh, that looks nice. How's the game look? Demo limited. I have no controller and arrows control to shoot. Three hundred and fifteen seconds. ATI X nineteen hundred, hundred and twenty-eight megs, running at six hundred and one hertz megahertz. Some stuff, supported outputs too, and a mouse pointer ARGB. Neat. Now I was told something on Discord about how to make the Amiga demos run in full screen. I have to do something to them, some command that I forgot. We're gonna go back into this EUAE config. Uh, WHD load conf. We're gonna do a 1200 config. Okay. I'm just gonna look for a ROM, a 3.1 ROM. But how do I load stuff? There's so many things to discover. Such sites to show you. The games look great. Emulation stuff, I have to figure out. There's so many. Stellos, Atari, Super Nintendo, SMS, Plus, Orca, Cron, Vectrex, DOSBox. I have DOSBox. Commodore 128. What happens if I run that? I don't know. I need a Commodore 128 run, probably. Apparently not. There we go. It's Vice. I don't know what the keyboard is, but it's it's got some stuff built in with the Morph OS Chrysalis Pack for 318. I personally like easy to install because you don't have to bloat your system down with all the stuff and the menus that it comes with. It's kind of like everything. You get everything whether you want it or not. Ace is what? Amstrad 128. I know nothing about Amstrad, so if you do, there you go. So the options are endless now with this Morph OS G5 Dual 2 from 2005. I had to buy a network card and a really kick butt video card, which was pretty pricey for me. Um, but and the license for Morph at 79 euro monies, which was about 86 US dollars. I support the team. I now own two copies. I have a really early copy and then a really late copy because I'm one of the latest re 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 uh, yeah, registrations. I just got it a couple days ago. So thank you to the Morpho S team for their quick turnaround with my license. Let's see what DOSBox has in the line of DOSBoxables. Oh my god, it's already set up. Sweet. There's nothing on there. When you're done, exit out, and you're back. I have DOSBox games like Duke Nukem and all sorts of things I can set up in there. Cool, that's Vectrex. I don't know enough about EUAE to figure it out. EUAE config 1200. And it just does so. How do you get it out? I went to config and it just launches it. I can get Kickstar 3.1 to show up, but I don't know what I'm doing. Looks great. But how do I... How do I... Control Alt Q. Control Alt Q. There we go. Shit. So my Morph OS with dual displays works fine. We have networking. I have a nice graphics card. I have a legal license and a brand new machine courtesy of Mr. Matt. Well, it's 20 years old, but it's brand new to me and I greatly thank you for this kind donation. I do have Power Max, but he was very adamant on me getting a PCI Express model. So thank you, Mr. Matt, for this. I'm going to use this way more often now. So I'm going to continue to download some demos and enjoy them in the background. Thank you guys for coming along on this more extended Morph OS journey on the new to me Power Mac G5 2005 2.0 PCI Express Edition with an ATI Radeon X1900 and a little tiny uh, Realtek TP-Link Ethernet card until the onboard gets developed a little more for this model. The others work right out of the box. Thanks for coming along on this journey. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.
you'll know from funny, you bastard.